Hey guys, Marcello here, founder of Wandering Trader. Today we have two locals, a new local and a birth local, We're talking about the cost of living in Mexico City. give you guys mostly prices in pesos Mexica, Mexican pesos uh, the, the average exchange rate over the last correct me if I'm wrong year and a half two years has been anywhere between 15 and 24 ish so I'm gonna use an average exchange rate of about 20 so any numbers that I give you guys in Mexican pesos just divide it by 20 and you'll get the dollars so and I'll also try to put it here you know somewhere in the video so you guys can see it so as a foreigner, uh, she, she's from Sweden, France, Europe, <laughs> and he's Mexico City, born in Mexico City, raised in Mexico City, conquering Swedes in Mexico City. <laughs> and now she's a local, he's a local too. So, me as a foreigner, and my impression, right, you guys correct me if I say anything wrong, the, the, what it seems like to me is it's extremely cheap for a, for a capital city. Right, if you go to Paris or even uh, Lima is pretty cheap, Buenos Aires is a bit more expensive. Most capital cities are a lot more expensive because everything is here. And what I've noticed about Mexico City is that everything is really cheap except the real estate. So going out to eat, Ubers, absolutely everything is dirt cheap. But if you're gonna live here and try to rent something or try to buy a property more specifically, it's gonna cost you a fortune because that really is a lot more expensive. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of all the things of what they cost, you know, ballpark. Uh, first thing I wanna start off with is the different neighborhoods. So I personally recommend, and I think they do too, they can jump in and, you know, and mention what they want. Uh, I like Condesa and Roma. Condesa more than Roma, those are, I don't know, like the trendy, yeah. hipstery cafes and, and, you know, European, French, and Spanish streets. Really, really nice. Uh, that's obviously going to be really expensive. Well, I'd say on a scale of one to ten in Mexico City, like an eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like an eight. Uh, great cafes, great restaurants. You know, family kind of atmosphere. Everybody's out with their dogs. All that stuff. Parks, trees, all that good stuff. So if you go down, uh, and I'll show you maybe a map. If you go down from Condesa and, and Roma down to the World Trade Center. It gets a lot cheaper, maybe what, like 50%, 40%? No, not that much, like a, like a seven. Like a, so like thir maybe 30%, yeah. So 30% cheaper, it's not as nice, but it's still pretty central. So here, you know, an Uber might take you, you know, 20, 30 minutes to get somewhere, anywhere you really want to go, right? Yeah. Unless you want to take local transport, which will call, which will take how long? Uh, depends on where, where you want to go. Yeah, because well, if, there's, if there's traffic... But it can be times. faster to take public transportation if there is traffic, yes. So, so if there's traffic during peak times, better to take local transport instead of Ubers or, you know, maybe a bicycle would be best as well, even though a lot of pollution in Mexico City. So, uh, Polanco is like 10 or 9.5 out of 10. 9.5. half. Very, very expensive, everything Art Nouveau. Carlos Slim, one of the richest guys in the world, has his whole business district over there. Then you have Santa Fe, which is 11 out of 10. Yeah. It's just over the top expensive. Other than that, I don't think there's any more places that I would recommend being, so that's kind of the, the ballpark. You know, in, in Polanco, you're looking at million dollar properties everywhere. In Santa Fe, multi-million. Uh, in Condesa, Roma, and World Trade Center to buy anywhere between 100, 150 to maybe half a million to a million. Yep. So for rent, to buy, I give you the amounts for rent in Condesa and Roma, how much would rent cost, give or take? If you want to rent like a studio by yourself or like a small studio, the cheapest you can get, I'll say uh, 15,000 pesos. So uh, in, the, in the World Trade Center, around this area, how much would it cost? 13. So you're looking at anywhere between $750 over there in Condesa and Roma to about, doing the math here on my phone, uh, $650. 
two bedroom apartments, three bedroom apartments, what maybe expect anywhere in this area, maybe a thousand to three thousand, four thousand yeah. dollars. Higher end obviously, like four grand, three grand a month. Lower end, which is cheaper here in the World Trade Center area, a thousand five hundred, maybe a thousand on the low end if you get lucky. Yeah. So that's what you're gonna pay in rent. The anything else you want to say about cost of living with houses and rent? Yeah, you can live, you can pay a cheaper rent if you live a bit outside the areas. I mean, just a few streets away of like, the central areas that are nice. You can definitely do that. Just stay away from a neighborhood called Doctores <laughs> and a neighborhood called Buenos Aires. Uh, mm -hmm. Central, I don't know. I, I wouldn't recommend living in Central. No, I wouldn't either. Because yeah, it's it's nice. There's a lot of stuff moving, but at night you don't. You know, he, he was even telling me from one street to the next we had a little bit of a scuffle today. From one street to the next, it can get dangerous. So I wouldn't recommend Central at all. Yeah, I wouldn't either. To live now. No, I wouldn't. Okay. Electricity. So here is a three-bedroom penthouse yep. in World Trade Center. He pays. 200 a month in electricity and then so the, the internet and TV here it's the same cost for everybody not no, no matter on the zone no no matter on the zone it's okay the same so so in Colombia it works if you're in a rich area you pay more but here it's it's the same so for electricity you're gonna pay anywhere around uh, what is that a hundred dollars ten dollars a month yeah. wow I'm even surprised okay uh, so internet TV five hundred dollars a month five Sorry, 500 pesos. <laughs> It'll be like 25, 30 US, yeah. So 20, 25 bucks for the internet and the phone. Uh, how much would the internet be if there was no TV? Probably 10 bucks, to, yeah, 10, like 10, 7, 10 bucks. That's what I mean. Literally, the center of the country, the capital, you're paying $10 for water. And this is a pretty big apartment. And a lot of people living here, even with us here. So, uh, gas. So for those of you in the US, we use electric for everything. Most places in Latin America and Europe mm -hmm. use gas for everything because it's cheaper. So water heaters are not electric, they're based on gas and then they never run out. So for gas, it's about 400, well that's about two, four, six, eight, twenty. 20. So about $20 a month in gas and that heating for the stove, heating for the hot water, cooking, all that stuff. Okay, uh, water, 100, 150 Mexican, which is five bucks. Five bucks, six bucks, very cheap since it's so contaminated. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Yes, you cannot uh, drink it. Yeah, you, you cannot, cannot, drink, yeah, you cannot drink the water from the. Well, you can, but <laughs> we wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the gym is very expensive. Yes. So, how much is the gym? The most that uh, I sell, the most cheap, it's like 70 bucks a month. Cheap, the cheapest. So, one. literally, US prices for gyms, and they go up to. 150, 120, 150, yeah. So gyms on a relative scale are a lot more expensive. Yes. Cell phone, if you're able to, I would get a cell phone from Mexico because you can use it in the US in Canada. and Canada normal. So I got a plan so I can use it in the US. I have three gigabytes of data. It's 30 bucks a month, 27 bucks a month. 30 bucks a month. 30 bucks a month and you can get, you have the five gigabyte, eight gigabyte one? Six gigabyte. And how much is that? 45 dollars a month, and in the states, I don't think we're paying anything less than seventy or eighty dollars minimum, right? Unlimited so, calls, unlimited messages, and you can call the U.S. anywhere you want. So, for those of you guys that are thinking about living somewhere else, what I do is I have a prepaid T-Mobile plan. I pay three dollars a month for, so I have a U.S. number. You can also do Google Voice, and then you, I think it's just like ten dollars a year or something. And then I have the Mexican phone. Whenever I go to the U.S., I use the Mexican phone to call, right, and to use for data and stuff. Anything else you want to say about that? No. Nope. I'm being really thorough because <laughs> I have all my notes here. Uh, transportation, so doing local transport. Yes, uh, that is really cheap. It's about five pesos for the metro and six metro bus. Like 25 cents. 25 cents. Yeah, so very cheap. Compared to what, five, six dollars for Europe? Yes. For, for parts for Sweden, I think yes. she told me. Yes, yes. Really expensive in Sweden. Uh, but you can also take Ubers here if you feel safer doing that. In the metro and in the metro bus, which is a bus uh, which has a, its own lane, there are sections for women. So uh, yeah, as a girl, it feels safer I think, to go that way. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on transportation? It's cheap and it can be faster sometimes. Oh, the BC. And exactly. And you, uh, if you're gonna be here for some time. 
uh, I would recommend to get uh, it's there are city bikes and you can get a card and use those city bikes uh, almost anywhere in the Just, city yeah, in the yeah. nice areas. <laughs> if you if you're gonna rent a car, you have to know that gas is, is more expensive than the US. Oh, yeah. that's a good thing to know. Yeah. Ubers are very cheap. We literally go, I think, a 20 or 30 minute ride, and it ends up being less than two dollars. So Uber is super, super cheap, might not be the best thing because there's a lot of traffic depending on what time and stuff you're going. So she yeah. says that a lot of times taking the transport is actually a lot better than taking an Uber. So keep, keep, uh, keep an eye on that. Groceries and restaurants. So you guys told me that you expect, expect to spend about a thousand Mexican, a thousand pesos in groceries, which is a week, a week, two, four, six, eight, ten, fifty, fifty dollars a week. So probably a little bit less than what you guys spend in the U.S. And you guys, what, two people, three people? Two, two people. people. So people, uh, man and woman, so he eats like 80% of the food probably. Um, if you're gonna go out and eat, I don't, I don't look at the receipts, but I'd say every time that we've eaten out, depending on how high level of a restaurant you go to, uh, what? The thing is that you can get, you can get, from, you can eat for 20 pesos, like one buck. Like so if, if you're eating on the street, yeah. uh, Joseph, ¿cuánto costó y comiendo los tacos de la calle? 50 pesos, 50 pesos. So 50 pesos, which is literally a dollar, two dollars, just to eat on the stands at the street. If you're gonna go to a higher level, which is like the trendy places in Condesa, Roma, I'd say for all four of us, it costed... 1,000 pesos. 1,000, so 40, 50 bucks. Yeah. And then obviously if you're going to go to Polanco or Santa Fe, American prices. Yes. Yeah. So even sometimes it might be more expensive than American. Yeah. So that's, and then here in World Trade Center, I'd say it's probably $30. Yeah. We went to sushi the other night. I think it was probably 40 bucks for sushi, which is normally a lot, a lot more expensive. So those are the, the restaurants. A beer. A beer is, they're cheap. Well, it depends on the beer, but the most cheapest beer you can get is like 30 pesos and more expensive, 110, 120 pesos, which is like six bucks. So anywhere between one to six dollars, which I'd say is probably still cheaper than the U.S. Probably. I think the U.S. you're spending eight, ten, fifteen dollars on a beer, depending on what city you're in. Yeah. So for the wine and alcohol, <laughs> wine you will spend about between ninety and hundred and fifty pesos, depending on the place again, on the restaurant you're going to. But uh, so how much is that? Five to seven bucks. Yeah. yeah. And well, th three to seven bucks. Yeah. A glass of wine and a bottle. A glass of wine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a bottle of wine. You can probably get that for five, three, four, five hundred pesos. So, that's... Nice. Like 15, 30 bucks, yeah. Yes. Okay, healthcare. So, if you're gonna end up living here... Um, you need to have private healthcare. They have a public healthcare system, not very good at all. Make sure you get private. You could probably get a US health plan and use it in Mexico, but it's a lot more expensive. So, you have a health plan that you can use in the US? Yes. And how much is that? I pay 120 bucks a month. So probably, I'd say, well, now that the prices are going up in the U.S., I'd say it's probably less than what you would pay in the U.S. And what do you do for healthcare? Did you just move I here? have a French one, <laughs> international one. It was the cheapest option. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't trust Mexicans, obviously. Except this one. This one you can trust. <laughs> uh, haircuts. So for male short haircuts, not long. For male short haircuts, he told me 70 to 200 pesos. So 246, 3 to... 10, 12 bucks. 10, $12. For women, you're looking at 200 to 500, which is 12 to 20. 25, 30 bucks. Have you ever gotten your hair cut in like Polanco or any like? No, I haven't, actually. She like it. <laughs> so maybe, you know, 50 bucks. Anything in Polanco or Santa Fe is gonna be US, European, or even higher. Yes. That's, that's like, you know, super, super high class. So that's all I have on my list. Is there anything else that we missed? Uh, no. 20% sales tax? 19? I have no idea. 16. 16% sales tax. Uh, most of the rest of the world, when you see prices, the tax is included. So I think in Canada and the US is the only place that the price doesn't include the tax. It's called IVA. IVA. So uh, what does it say in Spanish? Valor agregado. Yeah. Impuesto. Impuesto valor agregado. So value added tax, like a VAT in, in Europe sales tax for us in the US. So all the prices you see normally include the tax. And other than that, Joe, sir, anything you want to add? <laughs> I would like yeah. to add that be careful of spicy food. Yeah. Get really spicy. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> if if you if you go to a restaurant and they say and you say is is it 
is it picante? Picante is the word for, for spicy, and they say, no, no, not really. It's spicy as fuck. <laughs> so be careful with anything green and be careful with anything red. Don't try the avocado because it's spicy as shit. <laughs> so that's one thing. Be very, very careful with. So make sure that you tell them no spicy in, in the food that you want. Yes. Anything else? That was, that, that's actually a very good one. Yeah, and another thing, they don't speak English here. So prepare your Spanish before coming to Mexico City. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a video. Hopefully I can find, uh, maybe I'll do it with him this time. This good looking young man. I normally find good looking women. Uh, but he's good looking enough, right? <laughs> um, I think that's it. So let us know if you guys have any questions. I'll see you guys in Mexico City. It's not dangerous. It's not a war zone. We mentioned that in the other video, so keep that in mind as well. The news makes it sound like it's the most dangerous place in the world. It's, and my yeah, I'll, I'll say it's important to say that we have a lot of uh, immigration from like there's a lot of French people here living. From, yeah. there, there's parts that are very European, very American. I'd say more European than American. Very. I mean, it's, I, I think if you go to the right places, in my opinion, like Polanco and Roma. It's, it's great, right? But, you know, it's not a war zone. It's not, obviously it's not safe like Park Avenue, New York City, but I think places like Chicago and Detroit are actually more dangerous than Mexico City. Yeah. So, uh, I think other than that, that's all for Cost of Living in Mexico City. Thank you guys. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys in Mexico City. Yeah.